let's take a look at how to navigate around the Cubase 6.5 mixer a little better. The mixer can be opened in two different ways, either by going to your devices menu and selecting mixer or by hitting F3. Our mixer will have our volume controls, panning, mute, solo, listen bus. We could engage reading and writing of automation with R and W. We can edit the active channel settings, which we'll look at further in the video, as well as bypassing the inserts, EQs, sends, and we have a monitor enable as well as record enable function here. Now we have different types of elements in our mixer with different filter types here to the left. So right now by default, generally Cubase will default the input channels, but we could actually have our input channels visible here. Our input channels, we could actually see in our VST connections, which could be opened directly from the mixer by hitting this icon in the lower left-hand corner. So I can see all of my inputs. So in this example, we have 16 mono ins and a stereo in. And so if I wanted to make all of my input channels visible, I could come right here and choose not to filter my input channels. Now my input channels, I could actually apply effects, EQs, and adjust phase on my input before the signal is actually recorded. So very handy if you want to apply effects like guitar simulators and stuff like that. Now we can have different mixer views as well. So, but each mixer, we have up to three different mixers. So if I wanted this mixer to only see my input channels, I could choose to filter out my VST instruments, my groups, my rewires, and my audio channels. And now it'll only be my input channel. So I could have dedicated mixers for dedicated functions. Like if I want my third mixer to only be for virtual instruments. But when I have everything open, it'll be kind of a classic split console design where I have my input channels here, all of my audio channels here in the center, and all of my outputs on the right hand side. Now, if we want to see more information and more channels in the same amount of space here, we could actually have narrow mixer views. So if I click right here in the upper left hand corner, I could have them globally be narrow or wide, or I could choose individual channels to be narrow or wide just by clicking on the upper left hand corner of their window. If I wanted to see more information, we could open up our extended mixer view. This would give us the ability to see meters, Now, as we do this, we can also customize a lot of things. So we may notice that there are different color caps here in our mixer. So I have some that are white, some that are more kind of magenta, some are more bluish in color. And you may notice that the, we have different colors in the meters. But if you're missing me These could be customized by going into your preferences. And as we come here, we could go to your general area and we could actually see kind of your fader color cap intensity. And as you adjust that, if you want them all to be the same color, or if you want different colors for different types of channels for groups, effects, returns, MIDI, virtual instruments. Plus you could also adjust your meter colors right here as well. So if you wanted to change the meter coloring, you can go ahead and customize it for anything that you want. So very, very easy to kind of tweak your different elements. Now also we could come over here and we'll notice that the mixer channel colors will actually match the channel colors that we find on our project window. So if you actually wanted to change the color, so this way if I want all my drums to be blue, all my vocals to be uh, a different color, I could come right over here and actually choose different colors directly from the mixer. So if I hold down uh, my Alt plus Option key, I could actually go to my yellow and I could actually change not only the color of the track on the project window, but I could also just change the color in my mixer window as well, right from there. Now, when we see our different, we can also see other options besides just metering. So if I want to see my like surround panner, if I want to see studio sends, I could also break my sends down through uh, five through eight or one through four. Uh, and if I want to see all of my scents, now one of the great things that's very handy, there's a lot of great little shortcuts. So if I wanted to uh, work on an effect scent across multiple channels, I'm going to select this first channel, hold down my shift key, then select this channel. I'm going to hold down my alt plus shift key here, and then I could see all of my available effects return channels. So if I wanted to have a reverb across all the channels, hold down alt plus shift, and I could turn on a reverb across all those channels or turn it on 
or if I wanted to add my delay, I could come right there and simply engage. So Alt plus Shift will allow you to multiply apply different effects across your sends. Now, if I wanted to come here to my insert effects, I could say, oh, if I wanted to change the order of the inserts, come right there and I could just adjust the order of the inserts. Or if I really like a particular uh, plugin setting and I want to apply to a different channel, hold down your Alt or Option key and simply drag and you could apply that insert to another channel. Coming right here, we can have yet an, another view for all of our routing. So if I wanted to come here, not only could I see my routing information for inputs and outputs, but I also have a phase reverse and an additional volume adjustment here. A lot of people think that this doesn't work because you go to adjust it and nothing happens, but you actually have to hold down the alter option key because you can actually get an additional 48.2 dB of gain. And uh, we don't want you to actually kind of break your monitoring system accidentally. So hold down your alter option key and you can go there. Now we could also use the same trick. So let's say if I wanted all of my inputs to come from the same source, I could actually hold down my alt plus shift like we did with our sends. And now I could apply mono input to, or if I wanted to have all of my drums go out to the stereo output, or all of them to go out to my drum group. But if I wanted to actually kind of ripple the inputs or outputs, you could hold down the shift key. So I'm gonna select mono in one, hold down my shift key, release, and then you'll notice that'll be mono in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So very, very fast for doing all of your potential routing. Now, we don't have to be limited to seeing global elements here for our display. So. If I wanted to see different elements here and say this track, I wanted to see inserts and here I wanted to see meters and here I wanted to see maybe my sends one through four and I wanted these channels to be narrow and I really liked how this channel layout was for this particular project. I can now come over here to my channel view sets and what I could do is actually just store this view preset and we'll call this uh, demo one i'll hit okay and let's say i set everything directly back to our default state and i wanted to get back to my demo one i could just come right here click demo one and all of my settings will automatically be recalled for me now there's also some very handy things here if i really like a particular channel setup we could also on this little icon here copy that channel and then select another channel and just simply click on paste and now we could actually paste the same exact settings for a different channel. So copy and paste. Now this also is very handy if you wanted to actually take that selected channel and then we could actually save the selected channel. So if I wanted to use that setting in a completely entirely different project, I could just simply save that channel setting and call it up. Now one of the other things that's very handy is the I could save selected channels or I could save the entire mixer setup. So let's say I have everything kind of set up here the way I like with all of my routing. And I wanted to open up a different project. It's gonna maybe be like a very similar musicians, similar setup, the same drums, bass, guitar setup. And I didn't wanna to have to rebuild my mix again. What I could do is right click here and choose save all of my mixer settings. And I'm going to give it a name and we'll call this uh, demo three. We'll save it to my desktop. I'll hit save. Now, if I wanted to reinitialize all of my mixer settings, I could click on this button here on the left hand side and I'll reset all of my settings. And as I do this now, I could right click and let's say, okay, I want to load up kind of my almost like a mixer template and I'll choose, let's load all of my mixer settings. And we'll just kind of come right over here, I have demo three, and now my mix will automatically just jump and be recalled so that I could have kind of consistency from track to track. So very, very easy to navigate. Now we could also link multiple elements together. So let's say I want to take all of my drums here and I wanted to link all of my drum channels again. So again, hold down my shift key, select the first track, hold down my shift key, select the last track, right click, and then I could choose to link my channels. So as I move one fader, they will all move proportionally. 
Now, what's great about this is I could globally set up my mute, solo, listen bus, but I could also come right over here and globally set up my automation. So if I wanted to automate my parameters, be, let it be, hit the road, so I move one fader, and now all of my faders automation has been written proportionally right there. So as we go, it's now written the automation data across all of the tracks right there. So, and if I wanted to unlink my faders together, I could just right click and choose to unlink my faders. But if I wanted to keep the link, but I wanted to maybe adjust the volume of one particular fader, I could come right here and be able to adjust that while holding down my alter option. And now as I release, we could just go right there and be able to keep everything. And again, right click, and then we can just simply unlink our channels as well. Now, once we actually go to a particular channel, we could actually come here and let's say I wanted to go to a channel. I could click on the E key and we can see that we're gonna have our eight insert effects and this is gonna be our channel settings plus four bands of parametric EQ and our eight send effects. So what's great about this is we can kind of customize our different elements here. So right click in kind of a gray area in the upper right hand corner. And then if I wanted to do setup, I could actually choose to rearrange my different settings. So if I wanted to move my fader all the way to the left, or if I wanted to actually include my studio sends or include my send routing, I could include different elements right there. So I could really kind of custom configure exactly uh, what I want to see. So very, very easy to kind of tweak and choose what elements are visible. Now that your EQ is very handy because you could just literally, you don't have to engage your channels. You could just kind of come right here and just as you just kind of select your area, you could choose to just simply come right here and that will turn on your EQ. You could adjust the frequency right here as well as your Q and your gain. But if you wanted to do some really handy things, like if you wanted to adjust, you could adjust right here. But if you hold down your alter option key, you could actually have a little fader appear directly there. So let's say if I wanted to adjust my cue a little bit, let's adjust the frequency. Now, if I wanted to also hold down some additional modifier keys. So if I wanted to hold down my shift key, now it'll restrain my direction from just only being allowing you to adjust the Q of the EQ as you move the mouse up or down. If I hold down my Alt or Option key, I can only adjust the frequency but not the Q or the gain or cut. Or if I hold down my Control or Command key, or the gain, I could only adjust the gain or cut without adjusting the frequency or the Q. Now, Often we have multiple tracks, many tracks in a Cubase project. And if I wanted to easily navigate between different settings, I could come right over here. And in the, just below the name of the track, I could come right there and I could actually just see all of my available tracks in my project to navigate. So very, very easy to do that. Now, one of the things that is very handy is as you could select tracks here, you could actually have your different mixer parameters visible on the left hand side here. So if you wanted to just go to your channel settings and as you select your different channels, everything can be very easily visible here. And as you select different channels, it'll automatically update to reflect your different changes. So if you wanted to keep and have mixer elements visible during your normal project window handling, you could do that as well. So as you can see, the mixer in Cubase is extremely flexible and powerful, allowing you to get great sonic results.